O Lord, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that our hearts think be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to begin this sermon with a question. How many of you who are here this morning are widows? Show of hands. I'm not surprised to see so many hands. We've got quite a few widows who are members here at St. John's. Some widowers too, but more widows than widowers. Widows figure prominently in both the Old Testament reading and the Holy Gospel for today. But that shouldn't be a surprise either, for there are many references to widows in the Bible. In the Old Testament, we have the story of Ruth. She was a widow, as was her mother-in-law, Naomi. In the New Testament, the prophetess Anna was a widow. So too was Dorcas, who is singled out for her acts of mercy in the church at Joppa. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a widow after the death of Joseph. In Luke chapter 18, Jesus tells a parable in which a widow is held up as an example of persistence in prayer. The most notable characteristic of widows in Bible times was their complete dependence upon others for their daily needs. There were no social security or pension plans in those days to provide for them. In the story of Ruth and Naomi, for example, these two women would probably have starved to death without the generosity of their kinsman Boaz. In today's Old Testament reading, the widow of Zarephath was in a similar situation. For that reason, God in His Word frequently urges His people to care for widows. While there are no specific provisions for widows in the law of Moses, in Isaiah 1.17, the prophet urges God's people to plead the widow's cause. And in Exodus chapter 22, God warns against mistreating any widow or fatherless child. In today's Holy Gospel, Jesus takes issue with the religious leaders of His day for mistreating widows while at the same time for a pretense making long prayers. In the book of Acts, seven deacons were appointed by the early church in Jerusalem specifically to see to the needs of the Greek-speaking widows. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, St. Paul seems to suggest that there was a special order of widows who were supported by the church and in return offered their special service to their fellow believers. But it's the total dependence of widows in Bible times that we need to especially focus on if we are to understand the significance of both the Old Testament and Gospel lessons for today. It is only because they are so dependent that their acts of faith are so significant. Both widows, both widows in these two stories had nowhere else to turn but God. They responded by doing just that, putting themselves totally into God's hands, trusting in Him to provide for them. This is what we are talking about in the theme for this sermon, The Widow's Might, M-I-G-H-T. In the Old Testament reading, the widow in the town of Zarephath, to whom God sent Elijah, had only enough flour and oil to bake a small loaf of bread for her son and for herself. When that was gone, there would be no more only the grim prospect of starvation. The widow in today's Holy Gospel was apparently no better off. All she had were two small copper coins, the equivalent of a penny. Both were in desperate straits. There really was only one difference between the two. The widow of Zarephath was a Gentile. She probably did not know or worship the true God. The widow in today's Holy Gospel did. 
That's why she was in the temple, to worship the true God. The widow of Zarephath didn't know where to turn. The widow in the temple did. God, in his grace and mercy, sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. He did it for Elijah's sake, of course, so that Elijah would have a place where God could provide for him food to eat during the terrible drought, drought, drought that God had sent as judgment against the sin of wicked King Ahab and his equally wicked wife Jezebel. But God also did it for the sake of the widow and her son. God could have sent Elijah anywhere, but he sent him to Zarephath, to this particular widow, to bring to her hope in a hopeless situation, to lead her to put her trust in the true God who could save her not only from starvation, but also from sin and death. When Elijah arrives in Zarephath, he finds the woman gathering some sticks. Elijah asks her to bring him some water to drink. Oh, and while you're at it, please bring me a small piece of bread. The widow admits to Elijah her precarious situation, that she has no bread and was in the process of using the last oil and flour she had to, make, to bake a small a loaf for her son and for herself, their last meal. Don't be afraid, Elijah tells her. Go ahead with your plans, but first make a small cake for me, and then afterward make something for your son and for yourself. Wow, what a selfish request. Make some for me first. Then you and your son can have what's left over. And it would be selfish except for one thing, except for the promise that God will see to it that there will be plenty of flour and oil left for the widow and for her son, not just for that day, but for many days to come. In coming to Zarephath, Elijah had trusted in God to take care of him. He is now calling upon the widow to put her trust in that same God. And the widow did just that. The cynic might say that she had nothing to lose by doing so. And that would be true. One might say that the widow really had no choice but to do what Elijah told her to do. But she did have a choice. She didn't have to believe Elijah. She didn't have to put her trust in Elijah's God. But she did. She demonstrated that trust, that faith by doing what Elijah had asked her to do. And the result? Our Old Testament reading tells us that the widow and Elijah and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. Like the widow at Zarephath, the widow in today's Holy Gospel did not have to give her last two coins to the Lord. She could have given only just one, or she could have given nothing. But the widow also understood that her only hope was with God, that He alone could provide for her, not just for that day, but for the future. The widow believed that God would do that, and so she gave all that she had. So what is God saying to us this morning in these two scripture readings? If we're going to understand that, we need to see ourselves in the place of both of these widows. We need, first of all, to put ourselves in their shoes and see ourselves in their situation. We need to realize that by nature we are as helpless and dependent as they were. No, we may not be as physically dependent as they were, but we certainly are spiritually dependent upon God for His grace and mercy. Just as both women could not save themselves from a terrible fate, so we cannot save ourselves from our sins and all their terrible consequences, from death, from hell. The only hope for those widows was that God would provide what they need, needed in order to survive. Our only hope for forgiveness and salvation is that God will take our sins away 
and give us instead His grace and His mercy so that we might have eternal life. The widow's might, you see, was not to be found in themselves, but in God. And the same is true for us today. As we sang two weeks ago on Reformation Sunday, with might of ours cannot be done. Our might, too, is in Jesus Christ alone. He who suffered and died on the cross in our place, who took our sins upon himself so that we might receive his righteousness. But it's not just enough for us to put ourselves in the place of those widows. We also need to do what they did. We need to put our trust in God just the way they did. That's what faith is all about. Believing God's promises. Trusting in His grace and mercy. And faith is not just saying we believe. It's putting that faith into practice. The widow of Zarephath did that by listening to Elijah and feeding him first. The widow in the temple did that by giving all that she had to the Lord. How do we show our faith? Today's Holy Gospel suggests that one way to do that is in our giving. What does your giving tell about you? That you understand that God is your first and foremost help in every need? Or does your giving suggest that you believe that you must depend first of all upon yourself for all of your needs, both physical and spiritual? The widows in our scripture also suggest another way in which we can demonstrate our faith. And that is by heeding our Lord's injunction to care for those who can't care for themselves. And that would certainly include widows. Yes, the situation today is far better than it was in Bible times, but widows today still are in need of help, not just physical, but also spiritual and emotional. They need to see God's love for them also reflected in the love of their brothers and sisters in Christ. How good a job are you and I doing in showing the love of God to the neediest among us? That's a troubling question for most of us, I think. At least, it should be. The widow's might. That's the theme for this sermon. The might or the strength of both women was not in themselves, but in God and in their trust in Him. And the widows demonstrated that faith by their actions, by what they did. Are you looking for someone who might serve as God's example for you and for all of us? An example of both faith and faithfulness? It could just be that the widows might. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we will receive our tithes and offerings. <laughs>